You ever make a video and then you go back and, and then upon inspection you realize that all the footage is totally unusable and you gotta go back and do it again? If I look or sound like a horrible nightmare, don't worry, it's only because I've just gotten food poisoning from some dirty pizza. So I'm, now I'm home all day by myself and I figured, why not, fuck it, fix it. Since a lot of my sense of humor has to do with death and dying and what it's like to be dead, I get every so often some communication or another from somebody asking me for advice on what kinds of things I would like to do before I died. And since I, can, and since I consider myself, what the fuck is that on my wall? So since I feel like I'm so close to expiring any minute, I figured why not kill all of those birds with one giant boulder and make a video about how to craft the perfect bucket list. If there's one thing I know, it's how to make your last days on earth as enjoyable for you and as uncomfortable for everyone else around you as humanly possible. As a big passive aggressive middle finger as they put you in the ground. When writing a bucket list, it's important to treat it as if you're gonna die extremely soon. Uh, pretend as if you have a disease for which there is no known cure and plan accordingly. For one, it's going to make you want to maximize enjoyment during every experience leading up to your demise and it's going to make your conversations with other people way more colorful. So what would you do this weekend? Uh, not too much, I kind of just sat around and planned the months leading up to my eventual end. So I figure hypothetically, if I prioritize travel early, I can get all of my good walking in before my legs start to atrophy out from under me, and then every time I look down I have to take three shots of hard liquor just to stomach the blackened pile of goo undulating back. Oh, that, oh, that's something. I went to the beach. And now you've irreparably damaged a family member or friend for the rest of their life. So my point is I don't want to see any mundane garbage. There's a bucket list and then there's Things you'd like to do before the end of summer when school starts back up and math is too hard. If you put go to the beach while it's raining on your bucket list, you're basically a lyric in an Ed Sheeran song. And I can only surmise that your greatest aspirations include being able to afford the amount of food it takes to keep the 12 cats you intend to have when you're 46 alive for a month. And don't put like a celebrity meetup or an autograph on your bucket list because it's too easy and it's not worth it. Oh, I want to meet Leonardo DiCaprio. Great, buy a star map, you unmotivated rat person. I, meeting celebrities isn't special unless someone is sucking something passionately at some point. Some people say don't meet your heroes and you might think it's because they're just people and they're not going to live up to the lofty pedestal upon which you've held them. And that's true, but it's mostly because everybody's really ugly when they're eating a sandwich and unless they're Louis C.K., you're going to go right to jail if you ask them to whip out their whole tackle box in a Bentley dealership. Leave off of your list anything that's going to take a long and irritating amount of time. You want to learn a new language? Great. Cancer spreads faster than that. Unless you buy that Rosetta Stone program or you're some kind of actual genius, which is redundant because if you were that smart, you would have invented a cure for the disease that's killing you by now. Learning how to ask where the bathroom is in Scandinavian is just a waste of what little time you have left with your ability to walk before you lose that because the MS has spread to your feet. In a similar vein, don't be sentimental. Wanting to spend your last weeks alive with your family and friends is a nice gesture, but it also means you're going to die burning with hatred for your family and friends. Their last memory of you is going to be you cursing their name as you choke to death on your own blood. Literally, because fucking Kyle brought flowers, and you hate flowers, and they didn't even match the tone of the hospital room, and he's an inconsiderate sack of shit and he's just like his father. Not to mention, all that anguish lingers on the planet after you're gone. That's like the whole plot to the grudge. So now you're adding extra paperwork to your post-mortem because your mom and your sister have to go to Japan and find some old lady in a hut in the woods whose neck they have to lick. And then she chews up food and spits it into their mouth like a mother bird. And it's humid. And that doesn't even lift the curse, she's just like a freaky, sweaty old lady. Also, have some fucking imagination with the things you want to do and see leading up to the end. Don't tell me you want to climb Mount Everest. You know what's at the top of Mount Everest? 50,000 millennials taking a selfie against the quickly forming storm on the horizon and then cannibalizing each other and freezing to death five paces away from the path back down. Everybody's already been to Mount Everest. You missed it. Get a Pinterest account and just look with your fucking eyes. There's nothing up there but more snow and even more sky. Just wait until winter and then walk to the top of a parking garage. Every good bucket list should have death right at the end. That way, you're gonna feel like you've accomplished something regardless, because no matter what, you can scratch that one off. Well, you can't, but your family will. Or, at the very least, it'll smudge away from the tears they shed when they read your list and sob uncontrollably. Another thing to keep in mind is, you want to act as if you have unlimited capital. 
Practice explaining to three credit card companies over the phone at once why you need your spending limits increased to a million dollars a month. Uh, tell them you're buying a boathouse. That's not to be confused with a houseboat, I'm talking about a boat the size of a house. Then tell them you're buying a bigger house. Because hey, newsflash, debt doesn't follow you screaming into the nothingness of the afterlife. What are they going to do, subpoena your corpse? Because that's going to disrupt the funeral. Uh, you can't get blood out of a stone or a dead guy, and you can't donate your bankruptcy to science. I don't care how many dinosaur bones they might find in the financial hole you dug. If you ask a friend what their bucket list items are and you like some of them, that's fine. Use them to influence the ones that you make for yourself, but you're not allowed to straight up rip them off. It's a waste of opportunity. Unless it's a group activity, I don't give a shit how good it is. Your job is to top it. These are your dying dreams. Do you really want to go out like a Reddit repost? Dude, my dying days are going to be so spectacular, they're going to blow everybody else's out of the water. As a matter of fact, here's a great addition to your bucket list. Make friends with somebody whose bucket list items include scuba diving with killer whales or something like that. Uh, find out when they're going, gain access to depth charges, and literally blow them out of the water. Your bucket list items should all be so lofty and unfeasible that they're borderline insane, but still realistic if you're willing to sacrifice everything. You know what my bucket list items are? An eyes wide shot orgy where I'm the bed. Bionic limbs that shoot lasers involuntarily whenever someone quotes a TikTok in public within earshot. Flying lessons so that I can hijack Kim Kardashian's private jet and fly directly into the ocean in front of a cruise ship so the people on board actually get their money's worth. A private island that I demolish procedurally into the shape of a big seal ejaculating all over France. Another set of working eyes on my dick so I can see inside you. Triple murder. In come the 1,500 comments of people saying welcome back, even though I only upload once every, like, six months. <laughs> Stop getting your hopes up. <laughs> There's one more video that I can do, and then Matt and I got some stuff that we're working on, so be sure to check us out on our social media stuff. I'll try and post what I can remember right here, right now, in front of this gremlin. You know, this took me, honestly... So, for anybody who wants a little peek behind the curtain, I'm going to say right now, with full and total conviction, shooting videos when you're drunk is the worst idea I think I've had in most of my life. The first time I shot this video, it took two or three hours, and getting a sentence out in a way that I was comfortable with was so difficult that eventually I just slapped everything over and left. This time I got it done in like 45 minutes. I, I've made a decision. <laughs> I'm easily the most active on Twitter, maybe Instagram, but let's forget it. Let's all forget about Facebook. Don't worry about my Facebook. Or you can send me an email. I usually answer those every time. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to go throw up out of all three ends. And they're a mystery fourth. Ask me which. I don't know. It's going to be great. <laughs>